All right, let's have a little fun. Uh, normally I do movies and I do the occasional TV show or looking forward to doing some TV shows. Let's look at another childhood favorite of mine, that being G.I. Joe. Of course, G.I. Joe is not meant to be accurate. It's a child's cartoon, but this one is explicitly very military. And as much as I love it and Shipwreck is one of my all-time favorite characters, Let's take a look at one episode of G.I. Joe and just point out some of the things that aren't quite true military. So here I give you a first episode of G.I. Joe Season 2, Arise Sepentor, Arise. G.I. Joe! G.I. Joe! Okay, uh, ignoring everything else in the opening, uh, the song references G.I. Joe as a person. If you're a fan of the uh, comics and the entire G.I. Joe lore, you know there is the original G.I. Joe based on the original toy from the 60s is a man named Joe Colton. He is G.I. Joe. But the way this song makes it sound like, yes, G.I. Joe fights for freedom and everything is kind of in the singular. G.I. Joe here in this cartoon is a team. So why do they refer to him as a singular person vice a team? Questions, questions, questions. Right away, getting uh, the uniform question out of the way. Uh, this is a special operations unit, so we can allow the funky uniforms. Uh, it's say it's a specialty allowed to a special ops unit. Cool. I'll go with that for cartoon purposes. However, we'll look at everyone's favorite uh, Joe, or at least everyone in the Navy's, Shipwreck. Uh, who is wearing fairly accurate uh, dungarees for the time, uh, but with no white undershirt. Tisk tisk shipwreck. Should really get it together. Also, just so you know, for the time when they first created Shipwreck, uh, the beard was in regs. I don't know about the parrot, though. Here we see some good old uh, inner service rivalry between... Uh, Leatherneck, the Marine, and Wetsuit, the uh, Navy SEAL. Now if I was in charge... But you aren't, Beachhead. First comes Hawk, then Duke, then me, and finally you. So order of actual rank here, uh, Flint's assertion is completely wrong. Uh, Hawk is obviously in charge because he's a general but he put a first sergeant over him as a warrant officer, which is incorrect. And Beachhead was, I believe, a uh, sergeant of some sort also. So uh, chain of command here is completely whacked. Yes, Lifeline's very uh, blatant display of pacifism would probably disqualify him from being able to join. Why is Slipstream the pilot on sentry duty. Shouldn't he be resting up and being ready to uh, go do pilot duties? One of the fun little things about G.I. Joe, uh, of all the services they could have put mainframe in, they made him a Marine and specifically a Vietnam veteran. So as a, he was a former radio operator, uh, computer guy, something in, uh, in the Marines before he joined Joe. Uh, pretty cool because usually most of the people, they just kind of make them army. So, always enjoyed that. Here. General quarters, now! Army general calling for general quarters, a uh, naval term. Interesting. Ever notice how the, uh, the occasionally seen background generic Joes are uh, kind of a bunch of white dudes? No brown, no blacks. Kind of racist. So here we have the introduction of Sergeant Slaughter, played by professional wrestler of stage name, also Sergeant Slaughter, real name Bob Remus, an actual uh, Marine Corps vet. Of course, got famous for playing the drill sergeant nasty trope as a bad guy in pro wrestling, a heel, AKA, back in the 70s and became an American patriot fighting the Iranian terrors like uh, the Iron Sheik in the 80s where he got this gig uh, my question only is, like, they say he picked up the distress signal. Where is he coming from? Who authorized him? Uh, so many questions. Just so many questions. Duke said, you're looking at a real soldier. 
No, you're looking at a real Marine. A bit of trivia for you, Dr. Mindbender's background is that of a dentist. He's a, he's a buff dentist, I gotta say that. Never seen one quite that buff. Sergeant Slaughter ignores his duties to train uh, Paris Island Marine recruits and just uh, goes to work for G.I. Joe. I, I assume like all this paperwork was done behind the scenes and we don't see it, but the way it's presented is kind of, uh, well, callous to whatever uh, Marine platoon of boot camp uh, recruits he was training. Oh, come on, Sarge. Don't just send them off on a uh, PT jog without even changing their PT gear. That's just wrong. Also, like the guys that are, even though they're Arctic troopers and they're not in an Arctic region, they still wear their uh, region specific uh, outfits. That's got to get really hot. That Thrasher already has his Cobra uh, signals on the uh, Thunder Machine there. But uh, maybe he was just trying to suck up. And that's going to do it for the Salty Seaman for Arise Sepento Arise Part 1. If you'd like to see any more uh, G.I. Joe episodes, please let me know. These are tons of fun. I love G.I. Joe. I love I love the old cartoon. It's fun just pointing out the little uh, inaccuracies going on. Don't take this too seriously, please, people. Uh, that's all I got to say. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you later.